The market has devolved into a bad joke with the Fed buying stocks. Normalization is long gone and will never come back. This paradigm is dead, and we all know it. The Fed has been screwing this up for 107 years. The market is finished. This is the end of neoliberal, neo-Keynesian economics. This is the end of consumer economic theory. The debt-laden, fiat currency standard, failed. It is time to recognize this so we can move on to a better tomorrow. Only then can we once again discuss markets. The money is fake. The money printing plutocracy will continue to rule, with or without acceptance, via force. Global slavery, serfdom, theft and tyranny are the only things on the menu. A private banking system placed atop the common population. With a debt-based fiat currency, the citizens are the collateral. Main Street has been told they need six months of reserves to handle emergencies. Wall Street is so fucked up they don't even have one month of reserves. When Main Street runs out of money, they go bankrupt. When Wall Street runs out of money, the Fed triples up. The Fed is throwing dollar bills into the fire to smother the flames, but the flames keep going higher, and the Fed keeps printing more money trying to put out the fire. The Fed doesn't support the economy. It supports the parasite class on Wall Street. The Fed does nothing to support Main Street. Absolutely nothing. How many businesses on Main Street are listed on the exchanges? None. In my opinion, the Federal Reserve, acting by orders of their international banking bosses, will continue to keep these markets artificially propped perhaps for another couple months before they decide to pull the plug, which will cause the greatest crash in the history of mankind. Right now, they are saving the best for last. And when they do pull the plug, then will we see real panic. They don't want to spoil the whole show just yet. More government spending needs to take place, and more economic damage needs to be done before they give the order to pull it. And they know they have plenty of time before the command is given since they know how to plan and execute their agendas. The goal, in my opinion, is to completely bankrupt our US government and our economy. And the target is the US dollar. The dollar will still have value, we will just be broke. The international bankers will then offer their new world currency as the solution to the resulting upcoming worldwide financial upheaval. Their desire is to replace the US dollar, which is in the control of our US government, with their new, international currency, owned and controlled instead by the international bankers. I find it hard to believe that they are going to let this engineered crisis pass without achieving this goal. The international bankers will then have complete control of the world of finance. A complete takeover of this world by way of the financial system. Mission accomplished. The Fed has a dual mandate, one, to ensure that the federal government is funded. Two, ensure that its member banks are solvent and highly profitable. The nation's economy could fall off a damned cliff, with government tax revenue going down to nothing and banks' loans defaulting all over the place, but so long as the Fed steps in and buys treasuries to fund the government and provides liquidity to the insolvent banks it's doing its job. The Fed is a private institution composed mostly of European owners. Why would we, for one, let Europe run our money supply? As long as the main street accepts the abuse, it will continue. End the Fed. The Fed is a real problem, but the problem mostly arises from the scoundrels who control it and the rest of the government as well. There is no inherent need of a Federal Reserve, run by anybody. The US got along quite well without one until 1913. The Fed does not work for the American people. Its goal is to enrich those who own and control it. Period. And the Fed should become a national imperative and a global political movement. Shut them down. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. The Federal Reserve is a socialist institution, in that it is based on the socialist concept of central planning. The Fed and other central planning agencies view the economy as a machine, with levers to be pulled and dials to be twisted. It's not. Even the smallest village-sized economy is more like an organism, with far more variables that can ever be managed centrally. The sooner we begin to view economies as vastly complex almost living entities the sooner we'll end this mirage of central planning is useful. The Fed's whole modus operandi is to pump and dump and steal middle-class wealth. They build the markets up, small investors put their meager earnings in to make a bit, and then create a bust. The little guy loses his meager investment, but is always encouraged to invest again, and the insiders get out at the top and in at the bottom. It is totally designed to destroy the middle class by taking their wealth. 
Fractional banking is designed to constantly have more and more money loaned out which continually requires more and more debt until the debt cannot be paid off, ever. Like now, mathematically impossible to ever pay off our debt. All by design to steal real wealth from the middle class by the elite parasites. There are zero reasons for central banks whatsoever. Every sovereign nation can print their own sovereign money, no, zero need to pay interest to a central bank by any country, ever. Zero reasons. End the Fed, and all central banks. The Fed has plundered and looted people through the inflationary expansion of the money supply. The Fed has enabled your savings account to diminish to less than 1% while allowing bank charge cards with 25% plus interest charges. Only a fool or insider wants to keep the Fed. The big picture is it pushed naive investors into the stock market where every dime could be lost and most likely will. We did not have inflation much or the Great Depression until the Fed took over. The Fed is not federal but a bunch of banking cartels. Dismantling the Fed is the only way to restore a society that is based on genuine economic prosperity, one based on capital accumulation and free trade. Establish a free market monetary system, one in which the government plays no role whatsoever. The ideal is to separate money, and the state would be a major step in the direction of liberty and genuine economic prosperity. Link the rate of change of private sector debt to the interest rates, so the markets determine the rates, not a politicized for-profit central authority which is unable to measure inflation or to set appropriate interest rates. Recession and depressions are inherent in debt-driven markets and need to be allowed to play out without intervention to cleanse the economy of unproductive debt. The pursuit of perpetual economic growth and inflation are the problems. Real money should be an objective, universal truth outside the control of government. All governments are necessarily under the control of real money. And rightfully so. The entity which controls the United States through its banking system is what the forefathers of the Constitution warned Americans about. It controls President Donald Trump, and it controls the politicians you elect to Washington, D.C. They are all corrupt slaves. The criminal Federal Reserve will end themselves when they believe the time is right. We are approaching that point soon, real soon. Things will get very interesting now that Putin gave Saudi Arabia and OPEC the middle finger. Please, end these sorry banksters. It should never have come this far before something happened. Congress can't even allow a true audit. Ron Paul was right, and he tried in vain to secure such. I want these private banksters to fail miserably and be forced into jail with the rest of the too big to fail. The only solution is to seize the Fed and all of its assets. After an audit, the Treasury Department can go after all of the offshore global assets. This would likely require lodging threats against nations and their banks that hold these assets of potential arrests and or military action if said assets aren't relinquished without resistance. Arrests would be inevitable. It would be ugly and mean ugly. Such action would cause global instability in stock markets and financials for months, if not years. State banks like the Bank of North Dakota would have to be created to facilitate stability in the domestic economy. The primary relief would come by removing the money as debt model and replacing it with a currency backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, instead of paying interest to a corrupt, treasonous foreign-owned for-profit banking system. The American monetary tradition that the War of Independence was fought over was state-issued debt-free paper money. Our founders in all their unbelievable wisdom, never envision Americans to allow a Congress as we have now. World Health Organization would give those crooks the right again to determine and set the values of currency. There is more to the story, but that is a primer. We don't have lawmakers with the cojones to even think of ending the Fed, the goose that lays their golden eggs. The Fed is getting more powerful under Trump. President Trump doesn't want to get rid of the Federal Reserve. Whatever gave you that idea? He wants the Federal Reserve to drop interest rates to zero and print like maniacs. Donald Trump is the self-proclaimed king of debt, he bragged about it during his campaign for president. He promised during his campaign to open the credit spigots full blast and cut taxes as much as possible, which he did. That's his game plan to make America great again. He has no problem whatsoever running $1 trillion annual federal budget deficits, and he counts on Mnuchin at Treasury and Powell at the Fed to keep that juice flowing. I don't understand how Donald Trump got a reputation for being anti-banker, and anti-government spending. He loves bankers, and budget deficits, and he freely admits it. 
He's a Manhattan real estate mogul who built his fortune on leverage and connections. It's who he is. It's why he's successful. If Trump gets re-elected, the Fed will own it all, not that it would be different if Biden gets in. And the Trumptards thought Trump would end the Fed. Delusional projection. We don't have lawmakers with the cojones to even think of ending the Fed, the goose that lays their golden eggs. Bring gold and silver back and remove the Fed, restore Glass-Steagall, and remove the leverage and trading from service banks. Remove trading on options and futures in commodity markets from traders and banks, allowing only producers, storage, and commercial users of commodities to hedge risk. Get the damn lobbyists out of political influence. Well, that's a start. The Fed has damaged everything, including competition for loans. There is none. People who cannot create money out of nothing as debts, cannot politically compete with people who already can create the public money supplies out of nothing as debts. The Fed and all the other usurious central banks are the sources of the synagogue of Satan's power. It isn't going anywhere anytime soon. The only remotely possible genuine solutions would require enough citizens to better understand that they are actually members of an organized crime gang in ways which would enable enough of them stop acting like incompetent political idiots, as they mostly do now, but instead, use their power to direct the development of better organized crime. Of course, there are no good grounds to expect that to be possible within the foreseeable future. Rather, the existing debt slavery systems will continue to drive runaway debt insanities, which will provoke runaway death insanities, which will be the actually existing context inside of which some new systems might eventually emerge. At the present time, there is nothing publicly significant other than layers of controlled opposition groups surrounding the core of bankster-dominated governments. That kind of controlled opposition stays within thinking and communicating using the languages that were originally developed by the ruling classes, i.e., bankster-dominated governments, in order to facilitate professional hypocrites controlling civilization. The president nominates Fed governors, and Congress is the one who votes on them. Congress and the president control the Fed because of this but will not admit it, letting the Fed take the hits from the public and media which follows government mandates. The Fed's original mandate approved by Congress was to only buy short-term commercial paper from banks to provide liquidity, but Congress needing a way to fund World War I, and the government changed their mandate and forced them to stop buying commercial paper and only buy treasuries. This forced the banks to buy treasuries and resell to the Fed to obtain additional liquidity. Congress knew exactly what it was doing as this meant there would always be buyers of the debt treasuries by banks and the Fed, which meant Congress could spend, which is exactly what they have been doing ever since. Congress needs the Fed, and there is no way in hell they will get rid of it. Without the Fed, there would be no deficits, pork belly projects, the military-industrial complex, money to states, etc., etc., etc. The Fed is the cash cow for Congress and the President. This was not the first time the government told the Fed what to do as, in reality, it is controlled by them even though it is privately owned but again overseen by the Board of Governors. Before World War II and during the war, FDR spent like crazy, supplying countries with war materials and food, technology, etc. And to fund his vast social projects. Normally this would have caused interest rates to spike, but FDR ordered the Fed to keep rates at par, so not increasing borrowing costs. Those Americans that believe the Fed must remain a permanent fixture are the very ones that are on the take by positioning themselves to take advantage of others, poor people, poor countries that do not understand inflation or what lent or indebtedness or inflation causes. As the stock market crashes from all of the unmanageable debt that can never be repaid either. To believe in today's US dollar is to believe a huge and ongoing lie that is our money. It's illusionary wealth and is not real. It's worth a dollar because the government says it's worth a dollar. Not because of some intrinsic value like you find with gold and silver. The dollar is worth nothing, and what we're witnessing today in the stock market gyrations is the end of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency and as a store of value, which is another hoax put out by the government fraudsters. The stock market problems have more to do with too much debt and too much government and not one thing regarding some, virus. When the end of today's stock market comes through a huge downside slide that magically erases say half the stock market's wealth, it won't be from the coronavirus no matter what the fake news says. It'll be from too much unrepayable debt. End government. The Fed will follow. There are two prerequisites that have to happen first. 
First, the American public needs a greater understanding of monetary history and the function of money. And the student loan conflicted colleges aren't about to be exposing students to comparative economic theories. Second, we need to retire most members of Congress, which will require significant election reforms, the most notable being the need to return power to the people. The Fed is just a bunch of evil thieving warmongering hoodlums. Their capacity for evil surpasses the ability of most people to conceptualize. End the Fed now. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy.